Oh, hello there. Ah, hi. So, we're going to be speaking to you, as you can probably see in the title, which is probably about there, about the Microsoft... The HoloLens. The HoloLens. So, they released this video a little, a couple of weeks ago, and, um, you know, it showed, it was a very aspirational video, and it showed a lot of uh, technology and the uses for the technology, and, you know, it's not out yet, so, you know, anything could happen between now and release. But a lot came out of it in terms of, like, the way that they were using it and the possibilities in terms of tabletop gaming mm. and how that it will be able to enhance the experience so we thought it was worth having a chat to you um about you guys about what it could like what's what are the the dreams and aspirations we have as gamers and how we'd be able to use it at the tabletop yeah so you saw it so what were your first thoughts, well, well my first thoughts i mean it talks about blending mm. um real physical environments with with digital environments and mm. obviously that's that's incredibly attractive to tabletop gamers yeah um to have a, uh, a grid system with your, your characters on there and then with a, a snap of the fingers show the dungeon that you're in or, you know, the battlements and, um, you know, drop in uh, enemies and, and things on the battlefield. It kind of like really kind of... It's, it's almost combining that video game aspect of like, you know, it, it, that video game aspect of seeing everything happening and that ultimately that tabletop experience of having someone to be able to control it. So I can see a lot of like Dungeon Master being able to actually incorporate elements and say, you know, you're flung back and actually just simply, you know, push forward and then that character actually being knocked back. Yeah, I, mean, I, I like the idea of, of being able to use it for, for rules as well. Mm. You know, like, um, oh, your, your, your character wouldn't be able to see it because he's behind cover. Well, with a flick of the wrist again, you could you could have a, a first person view of what your character sees yep. and, and see if they could actually, you know, see them from where they are. That's actually a really good point. And you, in the video, um, if you've seen it, it, is, it, it really describes kind of like, they, they obviously use the Minecraft example. Obviously, they've just bought that for yeah. like a few billion dollars, whatever <laughs> it was. But you can kind of understand from that perspective that they they incorporated that and they put it on a table. And that's really where what got me excited was they're yeah. actually using a table and they were creating a landscape on it and they're actually being able to manipulate that in an, in its environment. Now, I don't know how the input control is going to work on this because yeah. ultimately it just comes down to it'd be awesome if we could do it, but how does it work? And also, how do we interact with it? I think it's going to be the bigger question, especially for our tailored needs. Yeah. I, I mean... I what I thought was really interesting is is there's one scene where you see a guy kind of walk into his living room and you see from his point of view the ocular the the hollow lens mm. um, scan the environment and, and and you know take in all of the dimensions of the floor and the and the coffee table and all that sort of stuff and then place a, a minecrafty kind of thing on top of that you know that's really interesting to to, to gamers as well not mm. only for a, a an indoor setting but for an outdoor setting you know can you mm. scan environments and and then import them into your game and that's really going to be incredibly exciting especially if you can like scan particular areas and then just incorporate them into your game so yeah. you know you go in and get an office building you kind of like get those dimensions and put them on the on the desk and say that you know then you can go along and if you're going on holidays you know somehow take those scenes then incorporate them into your game so yeah. that's going to be really exciting i think especially like caves and dungeons and being able to combine your own spaces in that regard which i think is going to be really exciting in that regard yeah what else um i mean you know the thing that always worries me about this is the the, the cost to, to benefit yeah. ratio yeah, yeah. and there was a lot of there was a lot of people using the the um hollow lens in a business environment yeah. obviously there's there's you know big um, benefit to Microsoft if they can get it into offices, but is it going to be cheap enough to get it into homes? Well, I guess what you got to look at that is it, we've got. If you look back, I think it's probably the best way to look at it because PC computers came into the office first, then they came home. And you go along, you look at the you know the thin LED you know TVs and screens were first used in the office, then brought home. Mm. So I, th I think it's definitely going to it's going to be placed in an office or a kind of like a business environment at first. But ultimately, what's really cool in the business environment will become mass produced and be able to get into homes because ultimately and especially with their advertising they are focusing on those home experiences though they do they do show commercial uses they often show the guy waking up the guy playing with his kid you've got the minecraft at home so they're, they're looking for more of a, a, a complete experience and the other thing they've got to do is they this program or this kind of thing is going to be competing directly with oculus and facebook so it really like both are going to be fighting for your dollar and ultimately, you know, that competition could lead to some really good deals. Yeah. And especially for us gamers, whoever wins that, or the technology that wins that is really going to define how we 
how we can actually incorporate this into our gaming experience. I'm curious as to how far the technology is, you know, where, where are they at with it? Because, yeah. um, you know, they've had the Kinect um, and they, you know, they've they got to be using... That. Yeah, they promised a lot with that, but you know, with the Connect Two, there's a lot of um, motion sensing and, and uh, environmental sensing equipment in yeah. the, in the Connect. If they can incorporate that into the into the headset, that'll make things interesting. So yeah, I'm I'm dead keen to see where this goes. Yeah, the other thing I'm really excited about is the opportunity to maybe bring somebody to the table who's not physically there. Sure. Because at the moment, you we do a lot of gaming sessions happen over Skype. And it's just like, well, what if you could actually have three people sitting at the table wearing these, wearing this holo or VR, whatever they want to call it. If, if there's three people there and they can actually see the real world and see that fourth person who's, you know, had to move away, yep. keeping that gaming group tight. Because ultimately, sometimes it's very hard to find people locally who you can just play with or all, or all organized to be somewhere at the same night. How does that look if we can actually virtually bring people into the gaming room? Mm, yeah. So... I think we're excited overall, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's all obviously tempered by a lot of the fact of time, cost, money, you know. Um, Take that away. <laughs> we're, we're, we're Take pumped. all that, you know. I mean, the the, the um, excitement that I have for this from a gaming sense is, is pretty high if they can overcome all of those other barriers. So. Yeah, and I, I think they have got a lot of barriers and there's a lot of competition. And the other thing is that who's going to go in there and develop this? Because this is going to be quite a, a large development and it's going to be incorporating tools and stuff like that. And, you know, it would definitely take a community to be able to support this. So I'll do it. Yeah, same Microsoft. <laughs> so we're hopeful. We're really looking forward to it. And we can definitely see how we would love to use it. Yeah. Um, but how do you guys feel? So Sound make, off in the comments. Yeah. Let us know. Let us know because this is, this is kind of like we get to kind of push the kind of agenda that we want to on this kind of tech and if we've got a loud enough voice we'll be definitely able to um, help either way so sound off in your thoughts and what you're looking forward to with this technology this one and the oculus and all this other kind of stuff let us know what you think in the comments below and um we'll do if we can we'll do a catch-up video soon on, yeah on... sound out your skepticisms too you know why why would this not work why what are what are the impediments to this happening be very keen to hear everything that you have to say yeah well until then we'll enjoy this fire and um We'll catch you at the next gaming session. Thanks, guys. Catch you. Ah, oh, so nice and warm. It's so fake fire. <laughs>